The back page of the West Australian today, Gilly, in it reads, Fat Shamer, Eagles boss takes swipe at ignorant rival, and that ignorant rival that, according to the West Australian, uh, is is Matt Rendell, of course, who's part of AFL Trade Radio, and you hear him on <laughs> AFL Trade Radio. Matty, good morning. <laughs> Hello, Goss and Gilly. How you going, buddy? We're going well. Yeah, uh, yeah, you've made back page news in WA, mate, for calling the Eagles yeah, fat. Do you stand by your comments? Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, look, uh, you don't have to be Einstein to see them over the last two years. They've been they've been uh, deconditioned, uh, probably the worst I've seen for a long, long time. Probably back uh, to Port Adelaide in about 2008, 2009, we called them the blowfish. And... Um, uh, they're not much different the last two years. They, they haven't been on top of their game in their strength and conditioning area. Uh, they need to get it back. They had a lot of players struggling to get up and down the ground, which wasn't the case back in 2018, 19. Uh, they were on top of the ground, but uh, I don't know what's happened over the last two years, but they're, um, they're, they've got a lot of work to do in that area. But is your, but is your um, opinion of that, Matt, Matt Rendell from AFL Trade Radio, former AFL recruiter, yeah. is online, is that just done on a visual that you've seen? I mean, or you've got data yeah. or you've... Oh, or, you yeah, tell, look, 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 yeah, what I, when I'm watching the footy, I, when I'm not watching it live, but when I can see midfielders being on the last line of defence and then the next minute kicking the ball inside 50 or receiving inside 50, like I did with Melbourne last year, uh, Oliver, Petrarca... Uh, Bayshore, Langdon and the like last year, certainly the Bulldogs when I see that happening during a game watching it on television I know they're on top of the ground, Collingwood were the same this year, so were Geelong uh, but I didn't see any of that at West Coast, uh, Natanui couldn't even get into the back half basically uh, Gaff spent a lot of time in the back half but never got into the front half um, obviously they had injuries to Sheed Redden didn't look right uh, Kelly was uh, had interrupted uh, Shuey obviously as well. The whole midfield had problems and uh, never looked. And Yo, of course, uh, none of them ever looked uh, really fit, like they were running up and down the ground. And you can throw in some of their forwards, uh, Ryan and, and Rioli weren't the same either. So um, just watching it on television, watching where they run and where they end up um, is what I do. Well, Matt. Trevor Nisbet's responded and said uh, a little yep. bit harsh, but he also says that there's work that needs to be done. So I would not want to be an yeah. Eagles player pre-season this year. It's going to be ruthless, well, mate. No, well, I think they would, they would know that. They, they would absolutely know that. I know you know, they had a go at Kane Corns about it. We're only trying to make them better. They've still got a really good best 25. In fact, an outstanding best 25. And I reckon they've wasted two years by not being uh, anywhere near the condition they should be to compete in this competition and, that, and that's why they ended up where they were and they weren't on their own Essendon were the same they were shocking GWS were horrible they could not run out of sight in a dark night so uh, the bottom four teams were the worst four teams I saw for uh, strength and conditioning and there's a reason they finished in the bottom four yeah, well, talking of lists, it's uh, the opportunity through the trade period for every club to just refresh and uh, re-energise their squad, and, and you're across as yeah. much detail as anyone. Matt Rendell, I believe, too, just quickly breaking news, Jordan Degoe is signed yes. five years with the Magpies. I so just that, heard that. What, first piece of the jigsaw? Before I came on, yeah. So uh, it sounds like they might have watered down the conditions a little bit. So just yep. listening to Sam Edmund, um, that... If he behaves himself for the first two years, he gets the following three years without the conditions. <laughs> so we're led to believe that the, thing, that the whole thing was uh, they could sack him at any time in his five-year contract. But it seems like they've watered it down a little bit and, uh, they've, and the Goey camps agreed to it. Oh, well, that's uh, good news for the Magpies fans. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I if he goes to IB the or, or Bali or whatever after two oh, years well, just I'll to be, celebrate. The first thing but... I'll be doing is... I'll be taking his passport off him. That's what yeah. I've been doing. <laughs> Optus might have already done that. But who knows? But uh, uh, <laughs> my, my question for you, uh, and, and, and please feel free to give us any any uh, yeah. you know, early news, given that it really kicks off today, the uh, restricted free agency and unrestricted yeah. period begins. Yeah. Um, but the effect of the, the Hawthorne um, drama around Clarkson and Fagan and everything, do you think that's going to affect decisions by players? Has that altered the landscape uh, in any big way, shape, or form? Well, it doesn't seem so with Griffin Lowe. He's still committed to North. Uh, Hunter Clark 
there was a, there was talk here that Hunter Clark was interested in moving. He's, he's still contracted to St Kilda. He was interested in going to North, and that's been pulled back a bit. Um, look, I, I, it's really hard to know what's going to happen here, but I would think if if nothing happens, and that could be a, 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 the real case that nothing actually happens, um, that I can't see why these why Fagan and, and Clarkson wouldn't be coaching next year. Um, because uh, um, you, it's, it's the talk is that the players don't want to front the AFL integrity um, situation. So what happens next? I've got no idea. I don't think anyone has. So I, I would think um, under those circumstances, those two fellas will still be coaching next year. And I think we're, we're, we just move on until something else happens in the future. Sure. What cards will fall first, do you think? And the mail is that come Monday when there's going to be open slather for blokes wanting to get out. The very strong word is that there could be 30 or 40 players looking to be traded yep. out of their respective clubs come Monday. Yeah, it's a bit different to last year, isn't it? So last year, everyone was really tight in the cap. Obviously, the cuts of uh, through COVID, uh, like a mil to a mil and a half off the salary cap made Clubs very, very tight in their cap. They tried to do their best to not cut the players' wages too much. Um, so there was no movement. No one had any money. But the whole landscape's changed this year because, one, there's two years left on the uh, the present deal that they get off the television rights. But, but as everyone knows, that is jumping by a third in 2025. So clubs are prepared to do long-term deals, as we've seen a lot of them, you know, like five, six, seven years for a lot of money. So clubs are anticipating that the salary cap's going to go, I think it's going up by a million and a bit this year, but it could go up by two or three million in two years' time. So uh, the clubs are going to have a lot of money to play with in their cap, and I think they're anticipating, and that's why there's a lot of player movement at the moment, the clubs are prepared to go and grab players on these long-term deals, knowing that there's going to be a big gap there. So, um, yeah, the first deal to drop... Well, I don't know what the first deal to drop will be, but the, um, the Bows one is really interesting. I can't believe... I cannot believe the money. I cannot believe the money that he would get for this last year of a contract. 700 Well, well it's not... Sorry. No, no. Uh, guys, I'll tell you what it is: eight hundred and fifty thousand by two years. It's two years. It's one point seven million he's owed. So just assume he signed a four-year deal on five hundred, which is overs anyway on the four-year deal. Uh, they they paid him like one hundred and fifty thousand in the first two years, which means they put three hundred and fifty thousand back on the last two. So now they've got a major problem because they've back-ended this contract and they're trying to recontract the Rouse and the Andersons. Mm. They've just done Lacosis and King again. Um, so they're trying to recontract. So uh, they're offering up pick seven if someone takes the whole 1.7 million. Wow. And unbelievably, DeLong are in play for it. So I spoke on Trade Radio yesterday about, well, they're three retiring this year, but not big money. Selwood wasn't on big money in the end. Obviously, Dow House, uh, Higgins wouldn't be on big money. But I went through their list. They could lose four or five next year. So I'm looking at Tui, Hawkins, uh, maybe Smith. They're all on one year as to go. Uh, Menegola might be gone. Two. Menegola. Who's that, sorry? Menegola must be Yeah, yeah well, he wouldn't be on big dough either. But I'm, blokes on, yeah. I would say, reasonable money. Obviously, Hawkins, Tui. And the like, uh, uh, Smith even on the wing. But so maybe they're going, well, we're going to lose, could lose three or four at the end of next year on reasonable money. So that's why they're in play. They want that pick seven. But so do Brisbane. Um, because they that pick seven will get them Dunkley. So uh, really interesting times. And, and now Essendon have come into play with the coach. Yeah. And they've got plenty of room in their salary cap. So the Bose one's interesting, but... Um, there's plenty of interest. Uh, Griffin Logue and Fremantle, they get Jackson in and they lose Griffin Logue. It defeats the purpose of getting Jackson in to me. I like Griffin Logue. He can play forward and back. He can play, you know, he's very versatile. And the biggest problem that Frio have got is that North is sitting there. If they don't 
if they play hard ball on it, North yeah. will go, oh, well, we're going to pre-season, you're losing for nothing. And they can't afford to lose him for nothing because they need some picks to get Jackson in. Yeah, they do. They do. Looking forward yeah. to hearing it all on AFL Trade Radio, mate. Well, your back page news over here, you fat shamer. <laughs> and thanks for joining us, Matty Rendell. <laughs>